What's going on, everyone? Kim Becker and Ryan Blackburn here for your weekly AMA, the second round of the playoffs, the NBA playoffs, Western Conference semifinals between the Nuggets and the Suns. Starts tomorrow, Ryan. You're going to have a busy week ahead. I know you had a busy week this past week, so let's just tack it on for you and do this AMA. Answer some questions here. You know, I'm, just, I'm excited. It should be fun. I, I, this is this is what it's all about, right? Like, I mean, what are, what are you saving this energy for, Kim? Like, come on, let's just let's just get through it. This is this is the big time to be a Nuggets guy. I'm, I'm excited to do it. The finish line is the championship, and I know the Nuggets have that same mentality. So we'll dive into these questions here. This first one from Garrett. To be good defensively, we have to put max effort in, weaving the Nuggets. Can we do this for six to seven games, or should we just make sure to hold home court advantage? Yeah, you know, I, I saw this question come in and thought it was interesting. It's tough for me to just say, oh, yeah, you should save your energy for the home games. Because one, it means, hey, you're going to go to seven games, and then you have to face Kevin Durant and Devin Booker in a game seven. That sounds pretty scary. Uh, but I do think that there might be something to it in terms of, Hey, Denver, they probably don't have to be at tip-top shape in order to win four games out of seven. They just have to win uh, four of them. Like that you can, in, the, in those other games, like you don't necessarily have to be at your best. That you can you can be a little bit more relaxed in, in some of those, or, or maybe you don't. Maybe you try to go really hard in every single game and, and then try to uh, win the series in five games or six games if, if, you, if it turns out well. But there is a cost uh, to going super hard in a game and then coming up short because it, it then basically says, hey, you put your best possible effort in and that wasn't good enough to beat a team. So I, I think there is something to be said about, hey, hold back just a little bit. Don't throw all your punches at the beginning of the series. You know it's going to go long. Just wait until you need to throw your best punches and do it at the right time. Okay, sounds good. Timing is everything here. All right, this next one from Fernando. The Suns shoot a lower number of three-pointers per game than the Nuggets. Do you think they try to bump those numbers against Denver? Yeah, this is an interesting one because you look at some of the numbers and, and why Nuggets fans, I think, could be excited about this series and about how they might be able to outscore Phoenix despite Phoenix having a great offense. Phoenix takes over half of their shots from the mid-range area. It's deemed the least efficient area on the court. They don't get to the rim as much. They don't shoot from three as much. And then I think Denver should be trying to, to keep that as, as math friendly for them as possible. The problem is that with the way that the Nuggets play, the Suns are going to get more threes. They're going to find more ways to get threes than against the Clippers. One of the things that the Clippers did was they would switch everything. They would isolate. They would force those Clippers or those Suns stars to try to shoot over good contests in the mid range and, uh, the Suns hit those shots and they got through it. But I do think that with the Nuggets, with Jokic out there, they're going to be in rotation a little bit more. You're going to be putting him in pick and roll. And what pick and rolls generally lead to are either shots at the rim, uh, pull up easy twos, or kick out for three. And, and I think that the Suns are going to be trying to work for those last shots uh, more often than they did in the first round. So They'll try to bump up those numbers. That's what's going to happen. But for Denver, if you can try to limit those as much as possible, make sure that they're taking like 15 to 20 threes as opposed to 30 to 40 threes, that's probably a better thing for Denver just because of how talented the Suns are. Okay. All right. Okay. This next question from Lone Star Legend, which bench player needs to step up the most in this series? Yeah. I mean, there's probably – maybe three or four candidates, I would say. Michael okay. Malone's been using a, he's been using an eight man rotation for much of the, for much of the playoffs so far. Bruce Brown, I think is the guy that we're always going to circle back to because he's their sixth starter. He's their guy who you always want to rely upon in clutch moments. He closed out game five over Contavious Caldwell Pope in, in that game five against Minnesota and his defense on Anthony Edwards was a big reason. So He's probably the guy that I'm looking at the most saying, yeah, you are the guy who can really help out in these situations and do a lot more. Uh, but I'm, I'm looking at Christian Brown too. I'm looking yeah. at Christian Brown saying, hey, six, seven, good defender, somebody who can switch a little bit, somebody who's going to be a hustler, somebody who's going to make Phoenix work a little bit harder. If he can do that consistently, then that's going to help Denver out so much. And I think that stepping up in this situation means, hey, you don't know if you're going to be able to guard Devin Booker or Kevin Durant. Stepping up for Christian Brown means, hey, you can. You can do that. You can absolutely make that work. And he's going to have guys score over the top of him. He's going to get into foul trouble. He's a rookie. That's going to happen. 
but he's one of only really three rookies in the entire playoffs that have been playing consistent minutes. Him, Keegan Murray, and David Roddy. Uh, shout out David, David Roddy from Colorado State. Uh, those three guys are the only rookies that are playing big time. And so it's a big deal that Christian Brown steps up in this moment because Denver's depth is their biggest advantage over the Suns. You have to have guys who do more. Yep. And they do have some guys that uh, do more. So this definitely is going to be a challenge for the Denver Nuggets uh, going up against the Phoenix Suns. What Devin Booker and KD both putting up like 35 plus points or something like that insane in the first series. So yeah, offensively, um, the Suns know how to get it done. And so defensively, the Nuggets need to definitely step it up with the depth that they have. All right, this next question, we're still kind of sticking on the same topic. If Jeff Green proves to be a bad matchup, how long do you think it will take for Michael Malone to adjust? Yeah, obviously a little bit more of a negative question, but I, I don't think that Jeff Green had a great series against Minnesota. I thought that he was out there. I thought that he was like, there were some good things that he did. I thought he matched up with Carl Anthony Towns reasonably well. If he has to match up with DeAndre Ayton, then I think that that's a, that's a pretty, pretty good thing for Jeff Green. He can switch, he can guard, he can do some things, he can battle. Uh, not necessarily going to be a big, big time hustler or anything, but he's going to kind of fill that role pretty reasonably. But if he has to guard Kevin Durant a ton, if he has to guard Devin Booker on switches, if they're trying to take advantage of him, if he can't handle DeAndre Ayton in the post, then maybe Denver has to go a different direction. Maybe they go with Zeke Naji. Maybe they go with Peyton Watson, guys that haven't really played that much. But uh, I, I think that Denver knows that they need everybody in, in this series if they're going to beat the Suns. There can't be any egos there. And so if you're Michael Malone, you have to be willing to change things up if you know something's not working. I think that he should be approaching this series knowing that this is kind of a bad matchup for Jeff Green, as Rui notes. I think that this could be a pretty tough one for him. But if Jeff struggles if in game one, in game two, then it's tough to put a, a rookie out there in Peyton Watson in a game three in a hostile environment. That's a, that's a really tough place to be. Uh, but I do think that Zeke Naji, maybe he's a guy that that could really step up in those situations. But it's so tough. It is a tough, tough question. Denver is so reliant on those guys that you just don't know like whether whether they're going to step up or not. Yeah, yeah. Ugh, we don't know, but we sure do hope, don't we, Ryan? Because yeah. like I said, <laughs> hopefully so. <laughs> hopefully so. Yeah, we need some of these guys too. All right, this next question from Nate Gordon. He is curious about your thoughts on if we see Peyton Watson play this series to cover Durant. Yeah, I just mentioned it uh, a little bit previously. Peyton Watson, I I still have hesitancy there just because Michael Malone said in, in the practice today that he's very comfortable with the eight-man rotation that they have, and they can extend it to nine or ten depending on the matchup. Maybe that means Peyton Watson. Maybe that means... Reggie Jackson, maybe that means uh, Zeke Naji, who, who knows? But what I do know is that Peyton Watson as a rookie, I had zero expectations for him heading into the playoffs, like starting on April 1st. Like it was it was after that point that hey, maybe, maybe he can step up. And, and now we're, we're four weeks away from that moment where he really started stepping up against Golden State. And I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about what he can potentially do. He did some great things guarding Kevin Durant at, at various points in the two previous Phoenix matchups. But what I will say to everybody is the regular season, it's not super emblematic of the playoffs. Kevin Durant is going to get foul calls. He's going to take advantage of the young rookie. That's just how this thing works. And so I, I wouldn't put all of your stock in, in seeing Peyton Watson out there because that's, that's just such a tough ask for a young player like that. I wouldn't want to put him in a position like that because it's just setting him up to fail, you know? Yeah. And this is not the time to do that either. Yeah. Not the time to set up any of these guys to fail. All right, cool, Ryan. Well, we've got one more to wrap up this AMA before the round two of the NBA series um, begins here. Matthew has a question. What do you think about so many top 10 defensive teams being eliminated? Does it affect your perspective? of regular season defense being co correlated to playoff defense? What a good question. Yeah, it's a, it's a more of a fundamental kind of, kind of outside of the, the general realm of what Denver is. But I, I think it's fascinating. We, we saw Denver step up at various points throughout the regular season as a defense. They showed it during the points that they needed to. And then during the points that they didn't need to, they, 
they kind of were, were meh on that front. But I do think that it's interesting. I, I think I, I edited this question a little bit. The number one, two, four, five, and six ranked defenses in the playoffs uh, or in the regular season are all out. They are out. They are eliminated from this from these playoffs. So I thought that that was pretty interesting. And just, just the way that Denver has approached this, in the playoffs, it's all about solving problems. It's all about the problems that are presented to you on the defensive end. And, and do you have the personnel? Do you have the willingness? Do you have the ability to execute in order to solve the problem that a team throws at you? Denver does. Like Despite the fact that Jokic can be taken advantage of in space, Denver knows how to cut off some of those easy plays. Now, we'll, that will be put to the test against Phoenix, but I do think that a lot of these teams that are the fundamentally elite defensive teams in the regular season, they're the, the strong centers. They have elite perimeter talent that they can deploy on anybody. The problem is that it's all about your weaknesses. And those teams have weaknesses too. They just do a better job during the regular season of hiding it. If you are a team like Denver, they, they have their own weaknesses, but they understand them a little bit better. They I think they've navigated those waters a little bit better. And uh, we're going to see whether that really – shakes out in the second round. But I, I think it's a fascinating question from Matthew. I think it's a fascinating concept. Uh, maybe playoff offense is more yeah. correlated to success now. Yeah, totally. Very And very interesting that you did that research and you did all that because that's pretty cool to hear, especially since it sounds like the main struggles that the Nuggets have had this whole season have been on the defensive end. So if indeed what you're saying is true and playoff offense is uh, more directly correlated, then we're in good shape here. We've got one more question. I've got time for one more question. I'm actually going to yeah. wrap it up with. Just came through. This one from Garrett. <laughs> Will this be the toughest series for the eventual champ? I, I love how presumptuous Garrett yes. is that this will be the champ. That whoever wins this series. Or is he talking about the Suns? I don't know. Uh, it, it may be, but I do think so. I was talking to a Suns beat writer uh, before practice today, and he and I asked him, do you think that this is this will be your guys' toughest matchup? And he said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. If, if, if the Suns were to get to the NBA Finals, the Nuggets will be their toughest challenge, too. Okay. Wow. I think that both of these teams have a healthy mutual respect for each other. I, I think that knowing how difficult it is going to be to stop the individuals, knowing how difficult it's going to be to stop the, the team concepts, this is going to really stress out both of these teams. It's going to stress out the Nuggets from the perspective of, hey, these are the shots that you're trying to give them up, and, and they're still hitting them. Uh, it's also going to stress out the Suns when – uh, DeAndre Ayton gets into foul trouble in the first game and then Jokic is just going off and then they just don't have anybody to match up on the inside. So it's going to be really interesting to see what Denver decides to do and then how Phoenix approaches this matchup from their perspective. But I think it's going to be a war. I think this is going to be epic and it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, most important thing though, is that if, if Denver does come out of this on the other side, whoever they face in the Western conference finals, is not going to be as good as Phoenix. Ain't no, no way. Ain't no way. And just with the way that the East is looking up right now, too, like Philly showed some scars despite having a sweep. They have uh, Joel Embiid is, is injured right now as well. Mm-hmm. The Celtics, they struggled with the Hawks. Yeah. And then the Bucks they lost. The Bucks yeah. lost to the Heat. So yeah. there are no elite teams right now in the NBA. The Nuggets have a potential to rise above that crowd and become elite themselves. But it, it won't surprise me if the Suns are their biggest challenge for sure. All right. So the answer is yes. The answer is yes, Ryan. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ryan, to everybody paying attention, following us. Thank you. Sending in your questions. Thank you so much. It's going to be an exciting week, Ryan. I can't wait to chat with you next week and we'll see where we're at with the Nuggets. (laughs) Good to see you, Kim.